Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, requested by one of my viewers on YouTube, we're going to step through the process of setting up your development environment on Mac OS X or Windows using Visual Studio Code for PowerShell projects. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and install Visual Studio Code, then we'll install the PowerShell extension after we install PowerShell Core Edition, and then finally, we'll talk about some of the settings that you can use to help optimize your development experience for PowerShell projects inside of Visual Studio Code. These options can be configured at either the user or the individual workspace level. So let's go ahead and jump in. As you can see, I've already got Visual Studio Code running in front of me right here, but let's go ahead and take a step back really quick. Let's go ahead and go into code.visualstudio.com from our web browser, and you'll immediately be taken to the download page where you can install either the stable or the insiders preview version of Visual Studio Code for your particular platform. As you can see on this page, Visual Studio Code is supported for Mac OS X, Windows, and 64-bit and 32-bit Linux distributions. After you've installed Visual Studio Code, the next thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have the PowerShell Core Edition installed. As you may know by now, PowerShell is now open sourced and has been ported to run on Linux and Mac in addition to the Windows platform, so you have a consistent development experience across any client operating system. So you'll go over to the releases page on the GitHub project, and if you scroll down, you can download the package for your latest release for OS X, Windows 10, Windows 7, and a variety of Linux distributions. In this case, I'm going to download the OS X package and install that locally. That should only take you a couple of minutes to do. Now that we've installed Visual Studio Code and PowerShell Core Edition, we need to install the Visual Studio Code PowerShell extension. Now what's great is that the VS Code PowerShell extension is available as an open source project on the PowerShell organization under the repository named VS Code-PowerShell. So if you have any bugs or you have any feature requests for this project, feel free to file those issues here. But the easiest way to install the VS Code PowerShell extension is to install it directly from the VS Code Marketplace. So let's go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio Code. And we'll go ahead and click on the Extensions button right here. And if we search for PowerShell, we'll be immediately taken to the Microsoft PowerShell extension on the Visual Studio Marketplace directly inside of VS Code. So all we need to do is click the Install button, and the installation process should literally take a couple of seconds. Then you'll be presented with a Reload button, and we'll simply hit Enter to reload the VS Code window, and that'll load the PowerShell extension. So let's go back over to Extensions here, and if we scroll down in our Extensions list, you'll see that sure enough, the PowerShell extension is now installed. Now that we've installed Visual Studio Code, PowerShell Core Edition, and the VS Code PowerShell extension, Let's take a look at some of the settings that we can configure in our VS Code user or workspace to optimize our development experience. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a new workspace. So if you switch over to the Code tab here, or rather the Code Explorer tab, which I can shortcut to using Command-Shift-E, you'll see that we can open a folder. Now, we can open any folder as a project inside of Visual Studio Code. There isn't actually a project file, but VS Code can sometimes create behind-the-scenes files, like this settings.json file here, in order to configure the workspace. So if you want, you can hit F1 and search for settings, and you'll see that we have user settings, which are easy to access using command comma, and we also have workspace settings. So you can either configure things for your entire user account on your developer workstation, or you can configure settings in VS Code per workspace, which can be really handy. So let's go ahead and open up our user settings. So we'll hit command comma, and I'll hit command B to close the sidebar there, and we'll focus our efforts over here on the user settings on the right-hand side. Now over here on the left-hand side, you have some commonly used settings, but we actually have support for IntelliSense inside of our settings file. So we can simply add a new setting here in our JSON configuration. And if we start typing PowerShell, you'll see that we have a variety of PowerShell settings. 
Now, all of the settings here are namespaced, so we can see a bunch of different code formatting related settings, and we can also see developer related settings. So if you're a developer for the VS Code PowerShell extension, those settings will help you out. And then there's a variety of other script analysis settings or integrated terminal settings that we can focus our efforts on here. So one of the things I'll point out here is that Visual Studio Code does have an integrated terminal in it. So if we hit F1 to go up to our command palette here and we search for integrated terminal, you'll see that we can toggle the integrated terminal and there's actually a shortcut for that, a keyboard shortcut right here, where we simply hit control back tick and that will open up our integrated terminal. So I'll go ahead and just hit escape to back out of the command palette and do control back tick to invoke the integrated terminal. Now, if you take a look here, you can see that we're actually running ZSH instead of PowerShell. So if I try to do some common PowerShell command like get command, you'll see that ZSH says, hey, that command isn't found. So by default, Visual Studio Code is actually using the default shell of my operating system. So let's say that we wanted to change the integrated terminal to use PowerShell. Well, there's a setting for that. So what we'll do is come down here and search for integrated terminal. So we'll find terminal.integrated.shell.osx because we're on uh, OSX here, not Linux or Windows. And we'll basically specify the path to PowerShell. So I'll do user local bin PowerShell. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and just reload our window here. So I'll hit F1 and search for reload. Okay, so now we've reloaded the VS Code PowerShell window. And we'll go ahead and fire up the integrated terminal here. And let's go ahead and just create a new file. And we'll change the language mode to PowerShell. And then we'll fire up the terminal here. That'll automatically appear for us. And as you can see down at the bottom right here, it says starting PowerShell. So the integrated terminal is now using PowerShell instead of ZSH. So once the PowerShell extension fully bootstraps and it's ready to go, we can start authoring PowerShell inside of VS Code. So as you can see, right to the left of where it says starting PowerShell, it says PowerShell, and that's the language that VS Code thinks our current file is in. Now VS Code will automatically detect that based off of a PS1 file extension or some other file extensions like PSM1 or PSD1, but you can also use the change language mode command from the command palette to actually force it to use a specific language. So that's what I've done here. I just told it to use PowerShell. So if we do get dash something and we hit control space to invoke the IntelliSense engine, you'll see that we get back a list of commands that start with get. So let's go ahead and explore some of the settings inside of VS Code that help us to further optimize the PowerShell development experience. So I'll hit control back tick to close my integrated terminal and I'll switch back over to the context of the user settings. I'll bring my zoom down just a little bit here. And if we put a comma and take a look at the PowerShell settings, we can see a bunch of other useful settings here. So one of the things that we can do is turn on script analysis. And this uses the PS Script Analyzer PowerShell module to analyze our scripts and make recommendations on how to improve our code. One of the examples that you'll see here in just a moment is that the script analyzer will tell us that we should use full command names instead of command aliases. So once we've turned on that user setting, let's go ahead and just type GPS and we'll change our language mode over to PowerShell again. And you can see that we got a little light bulb here. So if we click on that light bulb, you'll see that it says replace GPS with get process. And if we simply click on that recommendation, PS Script Analyzer will actually take care of that for us. So that's a really useful setting. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other settings that are available here. If you are reporting a bug with the VS Code PowerShell module, one of the things that you'll want to do is set the editor services log level to verbose instead of normal. This will help you to get more detailed logging information that you can send to the developers of the VS Code PowerShell extension to help them find out what the root cause is. Let's pull up the PowerShell settings here again. And you can see that there's a setting here called start automatically. So if we add PowerShell.start automatically and set it to true, what that will do is actually load PowerShell as soon as the VS Code window starts up, even if we don't have a PowerShell file open. 
So that's especially handy if you're using PowerShell as your integrated terminal, because PowerShell would be immediately ready to go as soon as Visual Studio fires up. So let's go ahead and just reload our window here. And you should see PowerShell load as soon as we launch Visual Studio. So sure enough, there we go. PowerShell is starting up, and we didn't even have to do anything aside from load up Visual Studio code. So that's a particularly useful setting as well. Let's go ahead and filter our settings down to PowerShell again. Another very useful setting, if you commonly use the F8 key to just execute your selected code or a single line of code, is the integrated console focus console on execute setting. So if we set that to false instead of true, what happens is if we hit the F8 key to process just a current line or just the selected code, so I'll go ahead and select get process and then hit F8. When I hit F8, you can see that the focus of my cursor is still up here in the code editor. If we were to change this focus console on execute to true, what will happen is if we hit F8 here, you'll see that my cursor, my focus, now gets shifted down to the integrated terminal. Now, this may depend on your preference, but my personal preference is to have the ISE-like behavior back on the Windows platform, where hitting F8 would not set the focus down into the interactive console, but instead it would just execute the command and allow you to continue typing up here in your code editor. So I personally like to set focus console on execute to false. Another cool setting that we can take a look at here is the setting that allows us to enable or disable profile loading. Now, depending on what kind of developer you are, you may or may not depend on your PowerShell profile script running at the beginning of a new PowerShell session in order to support your development environment. I personally don't really use profile scripts all that much, and I try to rely on them as much as little as possible, rather. Now, that helps me to write more robust code so that every time that I'm testing my code on a new system, such as a colleague's workstation, that I don't have dependencies on my profile script. So for me, personally, I'm going to go ahead and set Enable Profile Loading to a Boolean false, and that'll prevent Visual Studio Code from loading my PowerShell profile. Now, you might have noticed that there, was a, there were a bunch of code formatting related features inside of the VS Code PowerShell extension. So let's go ahead and dive into those a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and filter everything down to PowerShell.code formatting. And you'll see that there's some useful settings here that allow us to do things like ignoring one line code blocks. So if I have an if else statement that's on a single line, I can tell PowerShell that I either want to allow that or I don't want to allow that particular syntax. You can also have new lines after closing or opening braces, which can be super useful. You can also set the opening brace for an if statement or a while statement or a for each loop to be on the same line. Now, again, this really boils down to personal preference. However, my personal preference is to have the opening brace on the same line. So let's go ahead and set that to true and take a look at how that works. So let's say that I have a while statement and I say while true and I create a new line and I put my while block, I go ahead and implement my while block. Now, what I could do is actually invoke the VS Code formatting engine and say, go ahead and format this document. Now, you'll notice right here in the blue that there's actually a keyboard shortcut for this particular feature, which is uh, on my Mac, it's Alt or Option uh, Shift F. So let's go ahead and just escape and do Alt Shift or, yeah, Alt Shift F. So that's going to go ahead and invoke the formatting engine. And as you can see, the VS Code PowerShell extension has actually put that curly brace, that opening brace, on the same line as the statement it belongs to. The same thing will happen if I do if true, and I create a new line, and I put my curly braces there. Let's go ahead and just invoke that engine again. It's automatically going to fix those issues for me. But what if you don't want to manually invoke the formatting engine? Well, there's actually a setting that allows you to configure when the formatting engine is executed. So let's go ahead and put just another comma here. So we'll say, yes, we want to keep that brace on the same line, but we'll go ahead and search for format. And you'll see that Visual Studio Code, it's not the, the VS Code PowerShell extension, but it's actually VS Code itself, has an editor dot format on paste, format on save, or format on typing. So let's go ahead and turn on format on save and format on typing. 
So this is going to cause Visual Studio Code to format as we're typing our code, as well as every single time that we save a file. So now I'll go ahead and create a new if statement, put a curly brace on a new line, and as soon as I hit enter, you'll see that VS Code actually automatically fixed that for me as I'm typing. So this is a really, really helpful way to make sure that you have consistent looking code for your team to review. It's much more readable this way, and it prevents you from having to think too much about how you format your code as you're actually typing it out. So definitely make sure that you're relying on PS Script Analyzer to take care of those formatting options for you. So I hope this video has been useful for you. We've taken a look at how to install VS Code, PowerShell Core, the VS Code PowerShell extension, and we've taken a look at some of the features of Visual Studio Code that'll help you be a more productive developer in PowerShell projects. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at PCGeek86, and we'll see you next time.